In the far north of Western Australia, the Kimberley is a region where science has much to learn. The wildlife is abundant and diverse. The landscape is wild and unpolluted. And here on the Dampier Peninsula, north of Broome, things get really exciting. Only in recent years has its importance as a highway and nursery for humpback whales been recognised. But there's more. What's unique about this coastline is that the largest animals on Earth today are swimming past the footprints of the largest animals ever to have walked the planet. Written in this sandstone is a dinosaur story from deep time. There's nowhere else in the world you can come and wander along these beautiful beaches and come across some of the most important dinosaur tracks anywhere on the planet. It's literally years of study that people need to be here because we're finding new stuff every day all over the place, different things. It's just, it's, it's a wonderland. Uniquely, the dinosaur tracks here are interwoven with Aboriginal songlines and creation stories. Well, their footprints are like our ancestors, eh? They were the first, the first living thing in this country. But just as science begins to appreciate the full significance of the trackways, their security is threatened by a massive industrial development. For the first time on television, in a Catalyst exclusive, you're about to see dinosaur fossils that have never been revealed before. They're found in rocky platforms along the pristine beaches north of Broome. All this is the Broome sandstone. It runs for 200 kilometres along this coastline, up to 280 metres thick. Where it's exposed between the low tide and the high tide, you find this incredible array of dinosaur footprints wherever you look. Without seeing it with my own eyes, I would never have believed that this is possible. 130 million years ago, it was much more crowded here. This particular area in the Broome Sandstone, it's the only look we get at Australia's dinosaur fauna during this part of the early Cretaceous. We have no other sites in the continent of this age. Maybe something there, and then it becomes a lot clearer. Paleontologist Steve Salisbury is exploring an extinct oh, ecosystem yeah, as we walk right. through a landscape frozen in time. Most of the track sites that we see probably only represent, you know, between a few days and a couple of weeks, 130 million years ago. So they really do provide a fantastic snapshot. At the time, this was a vast river plain of muddy swamps and sandbars. Trampling through here were enormous herbivores known as sauropods, similar to Brachiosaurus or Diplodocus. There are very few places in the world and nowhere else in Australia where I can sit in the footstep of a giant dinosaur. This is one of them, and so is that, and that, and that, and that. Here what we get with the tracks is direct evidence of where the dinosaurs were, how many of them there were, and what they were doing. And that's stuff that we often can't get from fossil bones. So far, Steve and his team have recorded the track types of more than 16 different dinosaurs. The most abundant animals in the track sites are sauropods. They shared these habitats with a diverse number of ornithopods, along with various thyreophorans or armored dinosaurs. Least common are the carnivorous theropods. The paleontologists rely on the local knowledge of Louise Middleton. She's explored the tracks with the Aboriginal community for nearly 30 years. Finding Steve and working with the Queensland University has been uh, uh, fantastic for us. And also the fact that the Galarabalu people have trusted Steve to undertake this work and to hold certain knowledge that's really not shared with uninitiated men usually. See, we, I reckon that's a trackway, just that one, and this is the second one. Yeah, but this one's going in a different direction, mate. For the past year, they've been measuring the stride, pace and angle of the footprints to identify the animals that made them, even whether they were adults or juveniles. The grain of the sandstone is examined in fine detail 
to work out the habitat it came from. The locations of thousands of tracks are logged and photographed, some as stereo images to make three-dimensional animations. Real 3D models are made too using silicon casts. This one is a 10 metre long carnivorous theropod, the only track of its type on this coast, and perhaps Australia. Silicon that we can use now sets really quickly. I mean, we couldn't, couldn't have done this 10 years ago. Um, and it's ideal for this sort of setting where we've got to <laughs> race against yeah. the tide. You've got to be quick to study the fossils here. This tide is racing, and this was dry a few minutes ago. The tidal range here is up to 10 metres. And the fossils are only visible at the lowest of low tides, so that's for a few hours, for a few days, for a few months, every year. The tidal currents and storm surges constantly cover and uncover trackways with sand. Today, Steve's team gets to see one for the first time. Oh, yeah. So that's really nice. So this is a, one of the, the big ornithopod tracks. You can see three toe impressions, so one toe pad there, central one here, and then this is the, the second digit coming down into a big fleshy heel pad. It's a big animal, that's like eight to nine metres long, even bigger. It's incredible, it's covered in big sauropod tracks and a number of different types of ornithopod tracks. There's some really clear trackways just over there of potentially a new type of dinosaur. 19.5. But their excitement is tempered by where we are. Within the proposed footprint of one of the world's largest gas factories. We'd probably be underneath the breakwater. I mean, the port is, is right there. So this would go, we would lose it. The Woodside proposal involves piping gas from deep offshore wells to an onshore processing plant and export terminal and dredging a port for LNG tankers right here on this stretch of coast. Behind me is James Price Point, the proposed location for Woodside's gas hub, its refinery and its harbour. To give you some sense of the scale of the whole project, the breakwaters that they plan to build to protect the harbour to load the gas extend three kilometres out to sea, way past where we are now. It begs the question, where would the rock to build these massive seawalls come from? In a written statement to Catalyst, Woodside said their port construction would avoid the dinosaur footprints, but... If footprints or other fossils are discovered during construction, Woodside will identify how the footprints will be avoided, salvaged or scientifically documented. I don't think we should be making the types of really important decisions about the future of this area that are currently being made by government and industry and without really knowing what we've got. I mean, it's crazy. Many agree, and attempts to start construction are being staunchly opposed. Traditional owners standing in their own country are issued move-on notices by the police. For Galarabalu law boss Richard Hunter and his countrymen, the fight is about much more than fossils. It's about cultural survival. You know, we have a song line. We're talking about culture. Once they break the song line, well, then there's... we have nothing. Breaking that song line, it's, the, it's like um, someone going into the Vatican and, and smashing the chalices or um, vandalising the altar. That's the significance and the strength of, the, of these dinosaur footprints. They're, if they're the creation beings, and to interrupt or destroy that is, is, is spitting in your soul. Every hour spent searching between the tides brings important discoveries, all in the area proposed for the gas development. 170. 170. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gigantic. What have you found? Probably one of the biggest dinosaur tracks in the world. That enormous impression there is a handprint of a sauropod. Where there's a hand nearby, there's got to be a foot and look out. Oh, hang on. You're treading in it there. That huge, big depression is a footprint. That's incredible. So it's about... Currently, the record size for a sauropod foot is 1.5 metres. And that footprint's about 
1.7 metres long, you know, give or take a bit because it's eroded, but this is an enormous animal. An animal with feet the size of truck tyres would be seven or eight metres high at the hip and at least 35 metres long. I think there's a, there's a leg attached to this foot <laughs> going up. Um, these were truly gigantic. Yeah. Fantastic. If tracks of the world's biggest sauropods are impressive, then how about rock-solid evidence of an Australian stegosaur? It's got four stubby little fingers on the hand and then quite a fat three-toed foot. And that combination is, is really characteristic of stegosaurs. We walk around these rocks now, it's a bit slippery and we go for slides and stuff. He has too, so you can see his left foot, right foot, and then as he's come into this one with his, with his left foot, he's gone for a bit of a slip down there. It looks like there's a double step. He's kind of slid for a bit and then had to gain his, gain his grip and um, got to the bottom there and probably quite relieved that he's made it <laughs> and then continued up that way. This find is of global importance. Without tracks like these, we would never know that stegosaurs once existed here. When I found it, I realised instantly the significance of it. And I just literally fell on my knees and cried because I felt that if we can't save James Price's point with these tracks, then we'll never save anything. Steve believes the entire 200 kilometres of Dinosaur Coast is worthy of protection as world heritage. It should be conserved in its entirety. There's a whole scientific story that we're only just beginning to understand that requires knowledge of all the track sites together and, and linking all of them to try to under, understand the, the overall context of everything. I mean, you can do dinosaur ecology here.